Hey everyone, I noticed I had a lot of questions down in the comments asking specifically if you could play GameCube games on the actual gamepad. So uh, the answer is yes, you can actually do that and I'm going to be showing you that here in today's video. It's not only for GameCube, you can do it with other consoles, but I'm going to be focusing mainly on GameCube today. So uh, let's just jump straight into it. So the first thing that you're going to do is make sure you have your SD card and an external hard drive or thumb drive compatible with the Wii U plugged into your Wii U. And you're probably going to get this message here. You have connected a USB storage device that has not been set up for use, blah, blah, blah. Format it. So yeah, we are going to be formatting this. If you've already done this, you should be good to go. Uh, keep in mind, whatever drive you use, it's going to delete everything in it. So just be careful for that. So I'm going to hit format and format again. And we're just going to let this do its thing and we'll come back. Or maybe not because it finished pretty instantly. So let's just hit OK. And the first thing that we're going to want to do on here is go to the eShop while it's still open. And we're going to grab the game Rhythm Heaven Fever. Although I believe this is also compatible with uh, Super Paper Mario. So uh, I'll explain more as we get to it. So let me just get to the eShop. Okay, so you can see Rhythm Heaven Fever here. Uh, it's $20, but you can see I've already purchased it. What I'm going to do is just re-download it because I uninstalled it earlier. Uh, so I can make the video. So I'm just going to hit download. And the reason that we're going to be doing this is because we're going to be taking a Wii Virtual Console game. And in this case, it's this. We're going to be using the base of this game. And putting it simply, we're just going to inject another game into this game. So we're going to do the old switcheroo, and this will let us play our GameCube games, or certain GameCube games. I can't say I've tested all, so uh, I, I, don't, I don't know if there's a compatibility list or anything available for it. But I guess it's just going to be a test-by-test -test basis, but I'll show you how to get it running. Now you can see we have Rhythm Heaven Fever installed right over here. But we want to do one thing first, just to double check on something. So we're going to open up our system settings. And we're going to head over to the copy, move, delete data management. Go to copy, move, delete data. And we want to check the USB storage device. It should install here automatically, but we just want to make sure it is in here because it's pretty important. So uh, we can head back over to the main menu now. And now we're going to launch into our custom firmware. For me, that's Teramisu. So I'm going to open up the health and safety information icon. Then we're going to open up the Me Maker. And this is going to open up the Homebrew Launcher for us. Now, before we continue, there is one thing that's going to need to be done, and you're going to have to have a NAND backup of your console. I've already done that in two different videos, so I'm not going to be doing it here today, but I will leave a link in the description below for those of you that want to follow along and do that. But having your NAND dumped is a very important step in this. So assuming that's done, we're going to continue on and open up the Homebrew App Store. I'm just going to hit load. And we're just going to go to search and type in T-I-K. And you'll see tick to SD right here. So we're going to hit A to download that. And installing. It should be pretty instant. And so it is. So now we're going to hit the minus button. That'll take us back to the Homebrew launcher. And now we're going to open up tick to SD. So hit that and then hit load. And it's going to say press A to back up your console tickets or press B to back up your current disk ticket. So we're going to do A to do our console ticket. Tickets are backed up and then it's going to shoot us back to the homebrew launcher, I believe. Nope, it looks like it took us back to the main menu, but that's all right because we're pretty much done with everything on the Wii U. Before we head over to the PC, though, I just want to explain what the tick to SD application is, although you could read the description and find that out. But it basically dumps the keys for everything that you own on your Wii U. So, uh, yeah, let's continue on. So now that we're on the computer, there's three programs that we're going to be downloading here today. So the first one's going to be the UWU VCI inject line tool. This is our injection tool. And I'm going to go and click the V3.0 installer right here. And on the next site, this is what we're going to need to uh, back up our Wii Virtual Console game. So this is going to be the NFT to ISO. This is a converter tool. And we're also going to grab Dumpster U. And for this, you're just going to select your system version. Mine's Windows. And we're pretty much all set with that. So let's head over to the desktop. 
where we can start working. So we're going to need to install the dumpster U Windows tool. We're just going to open that up, hit run, install for all users, hit yes. And this is just going to download it right to your PC. And we're going to create a desktop shortcut, hit next. I know I'm kind of flying through it, but it's just a basic installation. And hoping it doesn't take that long. Yeah, finished. And the next one is going to be the UWU VCI installer. So just open that up, hit run. Do the same thing. Just do next, create desktop shortcut and install. And that one's finished as well. We're going to uncheck because we don't want to open this right now, but we'll be opening it soon. So just hit finish and we'll minimize this for now. So now the first thing that we're going to want to do is plug in our SD card and our external hard drive or thumb drive, whatever you're using today. So let me do that real fast. So the first thing you're going to notice once you plug in your hard drive, nothing's going to pop up. You're not going to have an option to format it or open it, read it, do anything. That's what the tool dumpster U is for. So we're going to open this up. And the reason being once you format it on the Wii U, it no longer becomes accessible on the PC. So we're going to select our hard drive. For me, it's WD easy store. And this is where your NAN comes into play. So you're going to need your OTP bin and your CPROM bin that are both in your NAN. So uh, I'm going to open this up here, go to desktop, and I believe, yep, Wii U NAN here. So here's my OTP bin. Open it up again. Here's my CPROM. And I'm going to hit OK. Now it's going to give us access to the hard drive. And you can see Rhythm Heaven Fever right here. So I'm just going to double click. Then we're going to go to output folder as desktop and dump game. It should be pretty quick. Uh, I think maybe 30 seconds, probably something like that. So just give it a moment. And there it is actually. So pretty fast. So we're going to hit OK. We can exit out of all this and we're done with the hard drive for now. So I'm going to unplug that and put the SD card in. Okay, so the first thing you want to notice is our dump game is here and it'll be auto labeled here. I'd recommend not changing that for now. Uh, this is the title ID of your game. So let's just leave that how it is. Now we're going to open up the UWU tool. I know I shortened the name, but it's going to do a first time setup here. It's going to download all the tools that it needs here. So let's just give this a second. I believe this might take up to five minutes. So I'll see you when this is done. Okay, now that that's done, before we continue with the application, we're going to want to do something to our dump here. So <laughs> do something to our dump. Okay, now that the application's open, before we start messing with anything, we're going to want to open up our game that we dumped earlier. Go into the game folder, the content folder, and inside here, we're going to drag this tool that we downloaded earlier right in here, and we're going to open it up. You're going to need to do this with every game that you do. So let this do its thing. It runs, I believe, a conversion tool, so just give it a second. And it's done. So now we can close this, close this, and head back over to here. Now we're going to be using the GameCube tool. You can see you have Wii, uh, Turbo Graphics, NES, SNES, and all that. But once again, we're doing GameCube here today. And it's going to say, choose a base from the drop-down menu. Now this is where our Rhythm Heaven Fever comes into place. So I'm going to open this. And now it's going to ask you to enter your CD key and enter your title key. Now, your CD key is unique to your own console, and this, again, is where your NAND dump comes into place. So once you press this and go to read from OTP bin, and we're going to select the NAND dump here, and it comes right on here. Now, the common key and the title key aren't supposed to be public information because it's unique to your console and unique to your purchases, so I'm going to have them all blurred out in this video. So I'm just going to hit check, and you'll see the entered common key is correct. The next thing you're going to look for is the title key. Now, if you open up your SD card and you go to tick to SD, you're going to have a text folder here called key.txt. I'm not going to open this up because this has all the title keys for everything that I purchased. And obviously I don't want that out. So all you're going to do is match your title ID, which would be for your game over here. This, uh, B0700, you're going to match up the title key. I'm sorry. You're going to match up the title ID to the title key. And once you get that information, you're going to copy and paste it into the program. So let me do that real fast. Now, once again, I blurred it out and I'm just going to hit check and it'll say the game title key is correct. OK, now that that's done, we're just going to hit download and this will be the base application that it's going to be uh, fixing here. So just give this one second. OK, now that everything is green here, we're going to go ahead and do select file and we're going to select the game that I have on the um, desktop here. 
got Mario Kart Double Dash ISO. And it's going to offer you a default picture, so you can see this is what it'll look like on the con the virtual console. Just hit yes. And we're going to hit inject. Now, alternatively, if you don't want to do this base download, you can open this up here and there's a custom option. Now, the base of the application is just the game. You can see code, content, and meta here. These three make up the base of the game. So just a little information on that. So now I'm going to hit inject. And this may take a second as well, maybe a minute or two. So I'll be back once this finishes. Injection finished. Please choose how you want to export the inject next. So I'm going to hit close and we're going to do it as a WUP installable file over here. So just hit this, let it pack. Again, this may take about a minute. So just give this a second. No, it actually didn't take a minute at all. So it's going to give you information throughout this whole process, just like, um, brick protection information, how to set up the SD card menu. Another thing that you can see here is you can add them by pressing the SD setup button to start the Nintendo config tool. So you're also going to be needing Nintendo on your console for this. But uh, before we continue with that, I'm going to go to open folder and here it created a web folder for us. So I'm just going to drag this to the desktop as well and exit. Now, if you don't have Nintendo, you can follow my previous tutorial that I made in the last video and I, I covered using Nintendo. Or you can hit the settings icon here and there is a start Nintendo config tool. I haven't used that, but uh, you can give it a shot if that's what you want to do. And we're all done with this actually. So now let's open up our SD card again. And we're going to go to our install folder and we're going to throw the WAP file right in there. And just let that install and then we'll head back over to the Wii U. Now that we're back on the Wii U, the first thing that we're going to do is launch into our custom firmware. For me, that's Teramisu, so I'm just going to open the health and safety icon. And this is basically going to do a reboot, so let's just give this a second. Then we're going to open up the Mi Maker. This is what's going to open up the homebrew launcher for us. And the next thing we're going to do is open the WUP installer. So just open this, hit load. And now we're going to select Mario Kart Double Dash and hit install. Now you're going to hit yes. And we're going to select the USB, not the NAND. Doing this will add just a little extra layer of brick protection for you, just to kind of keep it safe from destroying your NAND or in case you can't uninstall or in case something went wrong with the program. So we're going to let this install and I'll be right back. Now that that's done, I'm going to hit OK. And we need to go back to the main menu. So this is going to take us back to the homebrew launcher. Then we're going to hit the home button again. And this is going to take us to the Mi Maker. And then we're going to close. And you can see right here, we have Mario Kart Double Dash. And right when you open this, it's going to say this software supports the Wii U gamepad. Do you want to use it? I'm going to hit yes. And it's going to launch the game through Nintendo. And now you can see that the game booted up. I'm just going to hit the A button. And now you can see that we have full functionality with the uh, gamepad, which is pretty neat. The only downside is that you have to do this with all the games that you're doing. So it's a bit of a pain. It's kind of time consuming instead of just playing it on the emulator itself with a controller. But if you really want the gamepad function like that, you can do it this way. And like I said earlier, you can also do this with N64 games and so on and so forth. It's just that the game that you have to purchase from the eShop is different for uh, different consoles. So uh, yeah, I'm not really going to do too much gameplay here. Now I will say if you don't like the way the border looks on the screen, there are options inside of the UWU VCI tool that will allow you to change the aspect ratio. So there's a, a bunch of things you can do, you just got to tinker around with the settings and stuff, but this is basically how you get it done. So I think I'm going to end the video here, and I will see you guys in the next video. Adios.